the proof of concept is really looking at um, detecting endangered animals that are in low numbers um, and how well we can do that. So the last three days up at Borbor, we're um, doing trials with the dogs, introducing them to the environment. So we were working in there, they had a lot of fallen trees and really muddy and learning from the guys what the frog's behaviour is, where we can most likely find them so we can hone in on where we can get the highest probability of detection. It really is at that tipping point now for the bobo frog that if we don't take these actions we could well lose it in a couple of seasons. I can go an entire year without actually seeing the frog, just hearing them, knowing they're there, but it's very difficult to find them. They've got a heightened sense of smell that's about 10,000 times better than humans. So what we're doing is asking them to really hone in on a specific odour and then follow that back to the source. The idea with the dogs is being able to find some of the females out in the area because they're the ones that are hard to find. So we had an alert from rubble and when we scraped all the, uh, all the root system away they actually found a little burrow out there so it was quite an exciting time. Right around us, even though the habitat's still beautiful, this little bobo frog is impacted by chytrid fungus and we're simply losing them. This is such a critical time for us as a zoo to step in and, and make a difference and to help. It's very easy to see the frog disappearing in the wild. Uh, in the not too distant future, so it would be very nice to have a, a stable population in captivity. With the frogs we're looking at genetic diversity, so if we can find new animals we can add that to their breeding programs. In the old days a valley like this would have been full of frogs. We would hear 20 or 30 males calling. If we're lucky we've heard one. It brings home to us just how close we are to losing another charismatic species like the bobo frog.